Okay, well, hello everyone and welcome to the Food Factory FOSS final conference on the topic of modernizing traditional foods. Uh, as you know, my name is Lina Lindner and I'm uh, here with my colleagues Christoph and Putini. We're all from Iseki Food Association in Austria and we are running this international student competition. Just very briefly, Iseki Food Association is an independent European nonprofit organization which bridges education, research and industry in the food chain. Uh, we are also partner of the Horizon 2020 project Fair Chain, which you see here the logo on the screen, which is hosting Food Factory for us and which is funded by the European Commission. And I just uh, remind you that we record this uh, conference and that you can view it um, tomorrow and you can download on the website. So just to give you a fact check of Food Factory for us. So we've been running several cycles since 2017 on various topics related to sustainability, uh, on topics such as enhancing shelf life of food, fighting food and energy losses, sustainable aquaculture, sustainable cereals, and food biodiversity. And Food Factory for us is for teams of master students uh, worldwide. The main objective of the competition is to encourage student teams to design solutions on the competition theme that's relevant to the food industry. And by participating in the competition, the students work on a real food industry-based sustainability problem. And in parallel, uh, they attend online trainings where we aim at improving uh, cooperation skills and teamwork, albeit in a, in a competitive environment. So um, in the background, we also have a board of academic and industry representatives who evaluate the team's projects, reports and presentations and choose the winning team. So that means that the project evaluation is real. It's carried out by food industry and food associations with, uh, in collaboration with academics. And the advisory board is composed of Christophe Cotrillon from Actia in France, Karin Östergren from RISE in Sweden, Christina Silva from Portuguese Catholic University in Portugal, Catherine Flynn from Iseki Food Association in Austria, Peter Reigert from Pack for Food in Belgium and Paola Pizia from the University of Teramo in Italy. So the competition is taking place in an online learning environment where we aim at fostering a participatory and learner-centered and action-oriented learning experience for the students. And throughout the competition, the students have participated in five online trainings where we try to foster the development of the so-called six core competences of observation, reflection, dialogue, visioning, participation, and facilitation. And these six core competences are believed to be essential for young professionals to be change makers and push the green shift. So for the last two and a half months, the student teams have been working on their projects, which we will be hearing in a few minutes in parallel with participating in these online learning activities. And last week on the 5th of December, they submitted their project reports and presentations. And since then, the advisory board has been evaluating the project reports and the presentation slides. And now during the presentations, the advisory board will also evaluate the method of delivery and the response to questions. And as this is a competition, there will also be a winner who will be found today after all presentations and after we have received the points from the advisory board. And the winning team will receive an award of 300 euros sponsored by Iseki Food Association. They will receive the participation and accommodation for three members of the winning team to participate at the Swedish Food Hack in Northern Sweden in the autumn of 2023. This prize is sponsored by RISE, that's the Research Institute, Institute of Sweden, and both Iseki Food Association and RISE are project partners in Fair Chain. And of course, also the winning team will receive winner certificates. And finally, all team members will receive certificates of participation. But now we'll turn to this year's competition. And since the competition began in October, our 10 student teams have been working on finding solutions to modernizing traditional foods, 
contributing to local food value chains. And we're really excited to hear about them in a few minutes. But before we start the presentations, I'll hand over to Krista, who will tell us more about these fabulous teams and how this afternoon session is organized. Thank you, Leah. If you could, yes, perfect. So as you can see, we at least should have 10 teams with us today, but um, going through the participants list, it seems that unfortunately not everybody joined us today. But nevertheless, um, we are very pleased, or I'm very pleased to be able to say that we have teams from literally around the world. So I think nearly every continent is represented here. We have four teams from China, uh, Asia, sorry. We have the first team, Team Meimei, that is from China. We have uh, Nutrimento from Pakistan, Estate Crop Technology, UGM from India, and Team Fermi from Thailand. We have four teams from Europe, Portosauce, Algae Vision, and Team Healthy Octoboder. They're all from Portugal. And to round it up, uh, Team Wrap Up from Slovenia. But we also have two teams uh, from across the globe from the Americas. We have, I lost it, the Quinoa team from Peru, and also Dead Spread from Mexico. So we are really happy to have so many teams from so many different countries here. And as we're now all fresh and still motivated, I would suggest that we take a group picture. And now I ask all the team, team members to open up your cameras so that we can see you. I probably should do it. Perfect. If we have everybody, give it another second. Or anybody that wants to join the picture, also the advisory board and the participants, you can also open your cameras if you want, of course. And I guess we don't. So say cheese, smile. Perfect. Oh, no, Karen, you joined a second. We have we take another picture. We want to have her as well here. Check that your hair is perfect, Michael. And I know. Smile. Perfect. Thank you very much. So I will share here. Just a second. Uh, whoops. Whoops. Perfect. So these 10 teams have been uh, since October working on their project and also improving their projects and solutions to modernizing a traditional local food. But before we delve deeper into their projects, we have some rules to um, talk about because what would a competition be without some rules? So each team will have 10 minutes to give the presentation. Um, and in the first minute, they have to oh, they have to start with a one minute elevator pitch. And as already um, was mentioned, or I did mention it during the project review session, I will time the 10 minutes and I will be strict about it. So if you should take longer than 10 minutes, I will open my mic and ask you to come to a conclusion. After each uh, presentation, teams will have about two to three minutes to answer questions. And here I do invite also the participants, the audience to ask questions because these are very interesting projects. And if you do want to ask a question, you can either write it in the chat and we will then ask the question for you. Or if you want to pose your question directly to the teams, um, please raise your hand and we will then um, ask you to unmute yourself and ask your question. And this also leads me to the, in my eyes, most important rule of a sort uh, to please keep yourself muted through whole, throughout the whole co conference. Only if we ask you, of course, then please unmute yourself. But this is to ensure that we have a fair and uh, comfortable environment here during the, the conference. And with this, we should start, or we will start, uh, or should have started with the first team from Team Meimei from the Nanjing University in China with their project modernization of traditional Meitosa. But I fear that they have not joined us because I cannot see them. 
in the list of participants. If Team Mamie has joined in the meantime, I please ask you to unmute yourself and tell us that you're here. But as I fear they are not here, so we will jump to the second team. That is Team Portosos from the University Catholic University of Portugal with their project Pauda Francesina Sos. I, I'm very sorry if I butchered this, but if Team Porto Sauce is here with us. Yes, we are. Uh, yes, we are. Perfect, you're here. Then I will stop sharing my screen and um, the floor is yours. And you can tell us about your, your amazing project. Okay, give us a second. Okay. We can see your screen. We could saw your screen. <laughs> okay, can't you see in full screen? We had it in full screen, but now it moved back to um, just a PowerPoint. Now can it's you back see it? Perfect. Yes. Okay. Okay, so um, Francesina Sauce is a product with a very limited retail option. And our goal here is to tackle that. In Portugal, city of Port, there is a very regional dish called Francesinha. This specific dish is made with bread and a combination of various meats and is usually covered in a very particular sauce, which is called the Francesinha sauce. The problem with this sauce is that each restaurant that sells it as its very specific way of making it. And the consumers are forced to only eat that sauce in the exact restaurant because there is no decent or even available forms of retail for these types of products. Here is where our project comes in. Our idea is to create a way of transforming this powder, uh, in this uh, liquid form of sauce into a powdered form. With this form, the consumers would be able to make their beloved favorite sauces at home whenever they would want to, since the powdered product would have a big shelf life and be reused its um, approach. Good afternoon. Like Francisco said, me and my group, we are the Porto Sauce creators, and today we are going to present to you the powder for using a sauce. Uh, in conversation for a discipline that we have, Advanced Food Technologies, this competition was presented to us after, and after that specific moment, we all decided to start pitching some, some ideas for the modernization of original food. For that, we thought about the most famous food in Porto, which is Francesinha. After that, we decided to see how this dish could be modernized. And for that, we needed to focus on what made this dish so special and so important and so adored by the Portuguese people. We concluded that the sauce is what makes the dish so special and so different comparing it to various restaurants that serve it. Uh, to move with this idea, we had to understand what the problem was attached to this dish. With that being said, we started to focus on the sauce that involved the francesinha. Each restaurant makes their specific sauce and that's why exists, exists competition between brands uh, due to their unique sauce characteristics. Some people even try to make their own sauce at home, but the result never quite reached the ideal taste and the flavor that the restaurants give to their customers. We also researched the presence of this type of sauce in the main markets, food stores, etc., and we concluded that the specific product was not very well loved by the consumers due to the lack of flavor, and that makes the consumer not buy that product, which means the production of it starts to become pointless. This product is typically produced in a liquid form, which has a short shelf life. The industry tried to find a solution for this problem by selling it in a vacuum salad package. However, once this type of package is open for the first time, the shelf life of the product decreases again. So therefore, in some points, what the industry made was pointless. The way the sauce is sold is inconvenient for the consumer because 
only big and large doses of the cells are sold and they are sold in a liquid form. This factor makes that the sauce will ruin and get bad because it is not used, it is not so frequently used by the consumers at home. Therefore, its inutilization after being opened for the first time will result in a short range of time in the loss of the whole product. So, because it will go bad. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I was mute. Um, after a very careful analyze and creation of protocol for the idea that we have, we will begin the contact with different restaurants, showing them our ideas and techniques. And afterwards, we will start selling their product in our power form of a well-managed balance between the components that make the sauce, creating a business out of this. The transformation of the sauce from liquid to power form will enable a much longer shelf life of the product. Uh, the absence of water in power form makes it difficult for microorganisms to grow, which facilitates food safety and also the product viability. Uh, this form of product allows a great coverage in the market, combining different cells, portions, and also different forms of packaging. Uh, for the transformation methodology, uh, we decided to um, look into different approaches, something that could go that could work along the specific characteristics of this sauce. So for that, we focused on a uh, first approach that would be the usage of the spray dryer machine uh, on the liquid form of sauce. But then we asked ourselves, what if this is not enough? So we decided to think about two other different, to add two pre-treatments to the spray dryer uh, function itself. So the first uh, possible approach for the transformation would be the sole use of the spray dryer. The second one would be to add a, a pre-treatment of a centrifuge with the sauce. And after the centrifuge, uh, we would then place them on the spray dryer, the outcomes of that. And the final uh, possibility would be um, to, to do a filtration of the sauce before putting it into the spray dryer machine. For the spray drying process, we decided to check what types, what types of steps were supposed to be done with that technique. Therefore, we saw that the procedure involves three fundamental steps being the atomization of a liquid feed into fine droplets, then the mix of these droplets with a heated gas system that would allow the liquid to evaporate and then will be left with dried solids. And then the final step would be the separation of this dried powder from the gas stream, and then we would collect all the product. As long as the other approaches go, they are relatively simple. Also uh, with the pre-treatments, they are simple. Um, therefore, we didn't go into depth into them. Uh, the vision here is to make sure that we obtain a viable product, whether it is nutritionally wise, flavor wise, or even structurally wise. And with this, we'll leave you here some questions for you. Like, what advice do you have for us? Do you see any flaws or anything not doable in our idea? And do you see your advisors to choose another alternative to make this project? And with this, we end our presentation. Thank you so much for listening. Any questions? Thank you very much, Team Porto Source, uh, Francisco, Catherine, and Beatrice for this really interesting presentation. So now it's up to the to the audience to ask any questions you may have, as uh, Christoph said, either in the chat or you can open your microphone um, if you have any questions either to those that the team just posed or if you have other questions, you're very welcome. No, okay. Um, I, I had a question and um, I was thinking in this process um, of turning the liquid sauce into a powder, um, is there a, a waste product that comes out of this process? 
And if so, what, what kind of waste? Um, and do you know what will be the costs of depo disposing of this kind of, would it be like a landfill waste or what kind of waste would it be if there is any? Um, for the process itself, uh, what we, how do I say this? So the, what we want when we use the spray dryer, we, the products that we are left with are the actual products because we are trying to uh, uh, solidify the, so the, the, the sauce. So the powder that we have will be the, the product itself. Now, regarding the gases that will be lost from the machine, so uh, the water and maybe, and also the alcohol that is a part of the liquid sauce, um, we then would just have to manage on the, um, on the production and marketing of the sauce to say, oh, okay, you have the powder, then you just have to add water and a specific type of alcohol to mm -hmm. make the sauce plausible and with measurements and whatsoever. But that's basically it. We wouldn't have a lot of uh, excess compounds or something that would be lost. No, we would use everything. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we just have time for the two more or some more questions. What What's the cost of this product? Do you have an estimate of the, what the product, uh, the powder would cost? Uh, well, or maybe in comparison mm, to the to the liquid to the sauce. Yeah, I mean, approximately. I think it would be approximately the same price range because usually the the sauces, depending on where they're sold, sold, um, they the prices can vary from, depending on the quantity, six to ten euros. Um, but with the powdered form, maybe we would have to mm, go still in between those ranges, but maybe like eight euros or ten, because they could be on a higher, um, they could have higher quantities for selling, and the price, the the process itself had to be paid. So, hmm. the process of using the spray dryer has to be paid with that money. So, yeah, approximately eight euros, ten. That'll be a good price point. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, what would the shelf life be for this dried powder and which packaging concept would you use? Uh, okay, I can answer as well. I don't know if my friends want to answer. But um, for the, this, the shelf life, since it is a powder form, it will be estimated to have a, a bigger, a way bigger price, uh, shelf life comparing it to the liquid form. Um, and uh, regarding the packaging, um, maybe a normal concept of a package, like even if it is a plastic packaging for a plastic form of package uh, with uh, a, um, those sealing stripes, I don't, I don't know how to say it, I just only know, like zip mm -hmm. bags, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe in a with a zip uh, type of sealing because I mean it is a powder so it cannot uh, get water or um, humidity or stuff like that because it can go bad. So we would also market the pri the the product with the uh, keep on a low humidity place and those mm -hmm. specific procedures. Yeah. Okay, great. And uh, we also had an idea that we would do like a packaging for one meal, for example, uh, one packaging with certain uh, amount of sauce that can be used for just one francesinha, for example, and that way you only use one time this, the powder and yeah. For, to and we can put it, yes, and we can put it as well in a package. Uh, of three of them and the people can can then use it where whatever they want it mm -hmm. yeah okay um i think we don't have time for the last question but it's very interesting about consumer acceptance if you organize consumer tests comparing with traditional products but i think we need to move on maybe you if you can you could answer okay. in in the chat maybe okay. depending on the market maybe mm -hmm. the the market of what we did okay okay well thank you very much team porto sauce thank you so much uh, thank you thank you thank you and on to team nutrimento from pakistan
from the University of Agriculture in Faisalabad. You are giving a, your presentation on the potential use of um, cereals with fruit formulation as functional instant mix through lactic acid bacteria fermentation. Please go ahead. Good evening. Uh, am I audible enough? Yes, we hear you. We don't see your presentation. Uh, yeah, I'm just uh, sharing the screen. Okay. Are the slides visible? Yes, but not in presentation mode. If you can click the um, the slide, yes. Now it is. Please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are Nutrimento, and our project is about an instant porridge mix which has been formulated with plant-based ingredients. Almost 36% of Pakistan's population is facing food insecurity. And as Pakistan uh, has an agricultural economy, it would be of great interest to utilize the resources available within the country to target the problems the masses are facing. Therefore, we have designed a product with locally available ingredients to provide proteins, fiber, and a viable probiotic count. Our instant porridge mix comprises of the prime food groups, which are cereals, fruits, and nuts and seeds. It will be a great source of plant-based proteins and micronutrients as well. So start your morning with the healthy cereal. Here I am, Amna Suleiman, and Ariba, Amna, and Hera are part of my team. If we look into the food issues that our country has been facing, Food insecurity is the uh, most important one. As previously mentioned, almost 36% population is suffering from it. Looking into the stats deeply, we get to know that 18% of the population uh, severely lacks access to food. This situation is quite alarming as it is not only affecting the adults, but also children. More than 177,000 children are dying before reaching the five years of age. Lastly, the population is also suffering from micronutrient deficiencies and most important one being the iron deficiency. About 41.7% of women of reproductive age are anemic and more than 10 million working adults are anemic who show the symptoms of chronic weakness and fatigue which ultimately reduces the economic output. The food crisis our country has been facing are due to multiple reasons. The most important one is the gap between supply and demand. Pakistan requires 30.8 million wheat annually, but in 2022, there was a shortfall of 2 million tons, which ultimately uh, produced a wheat burden on the economy. Secondly, the natural disasters our country is facing are also contributing towards the food crisis. Flash floods that our country faced this year have affected 3.6 million acres of the land. Um, sorry, and uh, lastly, uh, I'm sorry, and, and lastly, inflation, which has globally affected every country, has also affected pa Pakistan equally. Over to Ariba. Uh, what can we turn to eradicate the wheat burden on Pakistan economy so it is a need of time to develop an instant mix safe fruit that is healthy and convenient meal, as well as GMO free and environmental friendly. It is not only a good source of iron, fiber and protein, but also it is the cost, cost effective. To target the above mentioned deficits, we are formulating our product with 40% quinoa, 20% red lentils, and 20% flax seeds. Two fruits are added. One is the banana, that is 10%, and the other one is date, that is also 10%. Quinoa and red lentil are specific for our protein essential amino acids that will target our gut health as well as prevent the heart issues. Next one is the flax seed, that is rich in omega-3 fatty acid suitable for our brain health. Banana is added for its potassium, that is good for 
brain health. And the next one is the dates that is rich source of copper, selenium, and magnesium. That is good for coagulation of blood. And then over to you, Amna. Okay. In order to explore the functionality of food ingredients in our instant porridge, the specific production process was designed. For the some, for the some important unit operations are focused in this to achieve the desired outcomes of our product. Among the most sustainable unit operations, there are procurement, roasting of grains, cleaning, washing, fermentation, and freeze drying. After passing through these steps, the ingredients are blended with previously mentioned formulation. Now, you guys might be thinking why we are utilizing cereals in larger proportion to overcome malnourishment as they also contain anti-nutritional compounds. To target the reduction with some other benefits, we are utilizing the potential of fermentation with the specific strain, that is lactobacillus plantarum. It will not only promote efficient phytate reduction, 85 to 90%, and enhances mineral bioavailability, but it also improves the sensory attributes with a high microbial count. Moreover, our product is formulated with zero artificial ingredient, which marks the concept of organicity. We all know risk detection and prevention is an important element of food safety systems. For a smooth flow, HACCP system has been implemented to reduce the risk of foodborne illness. Critical control points have been highlighted in the red. During raw material inspection, inclusion of any foreign body should be prohibited. For fermentation and freeze drying, specific this specification criteria should be followed. In the last final product, should be examined by keeping moisture at permissible limits, must, must have viable probiotic count, and zero for foreign body detection. Over to you, Hira. Uh, so this is the final form in which our product will be uh, in the market. So each pack contain 100 gram of porridge premix, which is equal to four servings. Uh, the one gram, the one serving contain 90 kilocalories. Uh, our uh, Siri Pro is rich in protein, which is 12%. It is also trans fat and cholesterol free. The selling price of our uh, product is 0.21 euros, which covers all the expense of raw material processing and packaging. The, uh, <clears throat> so what is the impact our product is creating? Our product is minimally cost and is rich in nutrients. Our population consumes wheat and rice as staple food. Therefore, formulating a product with the cereal-based food will diversify the diet of masses. Ultimately, it not only generates income for locals, but also boosts our economy. This product will ultimately improve the economy from the grassroots level, generating new ideas and providing uh, jobs to the um, rural area, people of rural areas. So, Cerefro is a solution to not only malnutrition, but also the food security, our food insecurity our country is facing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Team Nutrimento and Amina, Hira, Amna, and Ariba for this really very well done presentation and interesting project. Again, I open the floor to the audience for any questions um, that you have to Team Nutrimento and their instant cereal mix. You can ask your question in the chat, or you can also open your microphone. Hello. Uh, thank you for your work. It was uh, very interesting. I, I have a curiosity if uh, you already developed the product because I saw the package uh, already with some marketing information. May I repeat? Did you understand the question? If, if this is just an idea mm -hmm. or if you already prepared the product and what kind of equipment will be needed to prepare it? Okay, I'll, I'll tell you about that. 
basically it's our research product project sorry uh, we are master student and we are uh, dealing with it since the last year and uh, now we have commercialized it uh, by via a project uh, there is an international funding project parkuria nutrition center and we are uh, commercialized this uh, product through this uh, platform and uh, secondly uh, the second point which you asked can you please repeat uh, so you are commercializing. Can you tell me uh, what amounts are you commercializing already? Yeah, it's uh, uh, this specific product have gone uh, gone to uh, have gone to uh, evaluation by the senior uh, authority of PKNC, that is pa pa Korea Nutrition Center project. After yeah. that, we will commercialize it in the community. How many kilos, how many tons have you produced already to commercialize? Ma'am, can I just elaborate it? Uh, what she means is that we have designed the project and it has been approved by the higher authorities. We have not yet commercialized it, but we have just finalized the packaging, the logo and the nutritional information, mm -hmm. everything that will just go along with it. So uh, it's not yet in the market, but uh, it will be soon. Yeah, you, you know that to develop a product, it's also necessary to do the economic feasibility. Yes. Did you already do uh, study how much will you need to invest? What is the amount you plan to produce? Uh, how to get the funds for that? I want to, to know at what stage your project is. Uh, that is why we have uh, mentioned the selling price of the project. That would be that is a tentative uh, price that we have calculated as per the uh, rates of ingredients, the processing cost, and the production cost as per uh, it is just uh, hypothetical as yet. Yes, of course. Yes, yeah, but, but how much uh, will be the investment for? preparing uh, how, how, how are you going to produce it are you going to use a factory that already exists or do you have to build it from zero um, yes uh, ma'am it is an idea uh, it could be sold to the industries as well so that uh, they it would be then uh, their project and they would be working on it so that it could be carried out on the national scale, on a larger scale for the masses ultimately. Okay, but you don't have idea how much will be the costs of production and the costs of selling. Uh, we have mentioned it in the uh, slides. That the slides, we have just mentioned the selling price, uh, but previously yeah. we had mentioned what were the costs uh, we had to bear for the ingredients and what are the rates yes. of the ingredients available in the market as we have mentioned all of these ingredients are locally available mm -hmm. okay so it would not be that of an issue thank you and could you because there's another question comparing your um, product with a, the traditional porridge can, can you compare the price is it Definitely. Uh, it is more or less, uh, uh, if we compare it with the traditional products that are available in our market, uh, most of them have one or two cereals only. They don't have a, a composition, mm -hmm. a combination of multiple food groups. That okay. is what we are uh, introducing or that is how we are modernizing that traditional food that is already available in our market. So mm -hmm. that is the innovation we are uh, doing basically. And in terms of price, uh, I would like to mention that we have already stated that the product is very much cost effective. So it would not be a burden uh, for the people to buy it or to consume it. And it would be uh, rather very much affordable. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for these uh, answers. Thank you to team Nutrimento. Uh, and then we move on to team LK Vision. We move back to Portugal, uh, also to the University of, or the Catholic University of Porto. You are giving a presentation on the use of LK to innovate Aleiras, a traditional Portuguese sausage. Do we have team LK Vision here? Yes, we are here. <laughs> yes. Hi. Hello. Hello. Um, 
Okay, can you, uh, can, can you see the presentation? Yeah, we see your screen, but you have to put it in presentation. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, can you see it? Yeah. Uh, not yet. Now. Yes, now. Okay. Okay. So, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, the awareness of healthier food is increasing progressively especially due to the fact that diseases related to the cardiovascular system are increasing as well as the numbers of type 2 and diabetes patients and cancer patients. When living in Portugal, you will be fastly confronted with a traditional sausage called alaira, which consists of pork and poultry meat, bread, oil, herbs, and a lot of salt. A large amount of red meat and salt in the sausage support those mentioned diseases. So what's the solution to enjoy a lighter with a better feeling? The key point will be to remove the pork meat and some salt. Therefore, algae is added into the list of ingredients. This leads to a decreased amount of salt and red meat. Previous studies showed that incorporating algae into sausages results in a lowered pH and a better emotion stability. That is an advantage side effect considering food safety. The with algae innovated sausage isn't only more nutritious, it's even more safe. In conclusion, by innovating alhaida with algae, no one has to miss out this sausage in their diet. So this is the aim of our project and we are Algae Vision. Our team consists of four food engineering students from the University Católica Portuguesa, and we are Liliana, Nadia, Duarte from Portugal, and me, Rebecca from Germany. So more information with following our presentation now. And sausages are a traditionally popular product, you know, all over the world. And the one we are talking about is a fermented sausage. It's in a horsehose shape, and it's produced, as mentioned, out of pork and other types of poultry meat, wheat bread, olive oil, and is mixed with garlic, spices, and salt. In addition to homemade alayras, more than 500 tons are produced annually by various commercial industry factories, representing a fairly large economic resource for the region. These ones are traditionally popular and appreciated pro product in Portugal. And when we thought about this competition, we wanted to bring a very popular Portuguese product. And since most of them are main dishes, our choice was the alayra sausage because it's a ready to eat product. And this one is consumed in its original form or in the most diverse forms and incorporated in different recipes. The problem associated with these products is the based on the excessive amount of salts between 1 and 1.9 grams per, per, per portion. And according to the World Health Organization and the Food and Agriculture Organization, salt consumption should not exceed 5 grams per day per person corresponding to two grams of sodium. In addition, it is also important to mention the amount of red meat, namely pork, containing these products, which makes up a large part of the product. In this way, these two problems together and exacerbated consumption of these types of products are related to several types of cardiovascular diseases, obesity, type two diabetes, and some types of cancer. Associated to the problems is the food safety of, the, of these products. Since alayra have some risks, being the biggest source of contamination in the meat, since raw meats are usually high contaminated, and some, sometimes pathogen cross the microbial barriers imposed during processing. Consumer awareness is increasing regarding the relation health and food choices, and that are even alayra formulated with other types of products considered healthier. So our idea would be to remove pork in its entirety, but keep the other lean meats so the taste of the meat remains and also reduce the amount of salt after formulation. But with these changes, in, e in order not to risk of losing nutrients or de-equilibrating the product, it will be part of the idea to incorporate algae in the formulation.
Regarding production process, all the meats are shredded and cooking in boiling water with salt and spices. And then the bread in small pieces is added to the cooking broth. And when it is soft enough, it is mixed with the cooked meats, garlic, olive oil, spices, and more salt. When everything is mixed, the paste is inserted into cattle intestinal casings. After its actual formulation, the aerated sausage is dehydrated by smoke drying that consists of an initial steaming phase by slowly increasing the temperature until it re reaches 65 degrees. After the drying process, the dry sausages obtained are placed in controlled climatic chambers for the final finishing of the product at a temperature of 12 degrees. And finally, the sausages go on to packaging. Before being consumed, it is cooked in the manner intended by consumers, for example, by frying or grilling. But why the incorporation of algae? Algae has been gaining attention in recent years due to the interest in, an, in alternative protein sor sources. They are the source of protein, including essential amino acids, vitamins, and minerals, thus being a good source of nutrients to replace red meat. In addition, their product their production is far more sustainable since it requires practically only sunlight and nutrients for its production. Plus, it does not contribute to large methane emissions like conventional livestock production. The algae most used today in the food industry are spirulina and corella. So the idea would be to incorporate one of these. But other interesting algae could be Imantavia elangata, Porphyria umbicalis, and Undaria pinafit Pinatifida, which have already been incorporated into meat products, so they have been proven to work well in this type of product. There are a few studies that mention the incorporation of algae in sausages and compare what would happen in the product with vision to develop this experimentally. We decide to compare what happens in other sausages. Algae incorporation had an effect mainly in the cover coordinate A, which is a coordinate ranging from green to red which show lower values, possibly due to the greenish cover pigments, but nothing uh, significant in the final product. There was a decrease in pH values, which may be good for better preservation of the product, and a very positive balance regarding the enormous presence of essential amino acids and therefore better nutritional value. However, although there are sausages already formulated with algae, so far none of them has been the latest sausages. Uh, there are already several alternatives to the traditional Aurelia sausage but on the market today, from lower fat layers to layers made with specific types of meat or with fish or even completely vegetarian. However, in all these versions, what ends up happening is that the flavor doesn't always remain the same as usual because there's a complete change in the ingredients, as in the case of the vegetarian or fish layers or else the flavor remains the same, but other types of meat are incorporated and the amount of salt are kept the same. And this will be the highlight of the latest sausage made with algae, as it will not only keep the traditional flavor, but will also be nutritional, richer and safer to eat. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Team LK Vision and Rebecca, Duarte, Liliana, and Nadia for your presentation. I again open the floor to any questions. Question. There's already one very fast. Where does the cultivation or production of algae take place locally, or does it need to be imported from which, which regions? There's a specific region in Portugal where they are made. You, probably in the other, the other place, it's called it's in the zone of Mirandela. That's a city here in Portugal, but it can be made wherever we want. Okay. Um, I also had a question. If you compare the um, like the ex exchange of you said pork meat with algae. Um, if you if you compare the costs of um, pr producing algae and harvesting and processing with pork, what what is the difference in the price 
you know that what what would be the difference in the price if you produce this uh, product with algae instead of the traditional product I think that wouldn't wouldn't be a problem. I think it's the product will, uh, will not be uh, the price will not uh, go high because of that. But I don't know. We haven't made any study about the price of uh, our algae of our data. Okay. And then there are several other questions. Um, okay. From Karin, the algae added is it fresh or dried? Um, the idea would be to experiment the two types to see how which one of these types will be better in terms of flavor. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, could I have a short follow up question? Just if you dry, you need to be careful about the energy consumption and check the carbon footprints and compare with uh, the meat because it most likely it could be comparable. So if you would like to sell it for uh, as more sustainable, this is crucial. Thank you. And, and a last question, did you organize consumer preference test? I, th I think usually there's a lot of like uh, consumer awareness or consumer preferences uh, in terms of algae. Often there can be a fishy taste or odor. Did you did you do any consumer tests on this or sensory tests? We haven't made the product himself, so we haven't we don't know what would okay. be the reaction of the consumers to that. We only know that it will be a safer product to eat and the. Uh, our point was to don't to not change the flavor of the later. So we assume that the product wouldn't mind that the later is algae or not. Okay. Okay, thank you very much for your answers. I think we You're need welcome. to move on. Um, to now we go to Indonesia and I apologize for we said the wrong, it's not India, but it's Indonesia. The team is State Crops Technology from Gacha Mada University. Yes. Uh, you are giving your presentation on designing high precision of manufacturing, sorry, manufacturing process to improve the safety and sensorial quality of fermented shrimp. So please go ahead and share your screen. Can you see the presentation? Yes, we we'll see it. Thank okay. you. Okay. Fermented shrimp is a food enhancer that has been widely consumed in Southeast Asia, especially in my country, Indonesia. And Indonesia also have a traditional fermented shrimp called trasi. But our fermented shrimp still have low quality because mostly produced traditionally with limited tools and technology in small medium enterprise. They also usually pay less attention on consumer safety. So we create our project. It's about designing high precision of manufacturing process to improve the safety and sensorial quality of fermented shrimp. There are three ideas to modernize this industry, such as designing standard operational procedure, optimizing the critical process, and adopting modern manufacturing system. We hope our idea will bring a positive impact to fisheries welfare and increasing the productivity and also consumer acceptance. Then the modern fermented stream can compete in international market. And here we are. Estate Crop Technology from Gajah Mada University Indonesia, Intan, Diaz, and Nurul, we delight to present you our project in this competition. And now I will explain to you the objective of our project. Indonesia is the fourth largest fermented shrimp producer in the world, and we have our own fermented shrimp called Trasi. It is a traditional food condiment and used as a sensory enhancer in many dishes like sambal, sorry vegetable, and usually we eat together with family, friends, every day, and it has become a part of our culture. So no wonder 
If the consumption rate always increasing approximately 22% per year, with this consumption rate, fermented shrimp has an annual business value about 27% with the range price of the product about 60 until 90,000 Indonesian rupiah per kilogram. And we can find this product mostly in a traditional market. The question is why fermented shrimp only mostly found in a traditional market? The reason is this. Traditional fermented shrimp mainly produced traditionally by small and medium enterprise and due to limited tools and technology make the production process takes a long time with uncontrolled condition, resulting the lower quality. This traditional producer also pay less attention on hygiene and consumer safety. And we realize that this issue have a huge impact on the product quality and consumer acceptance that almost all fermented shrimp industry producer face the same challenge. So it requires an innovative solution. But before we can create a solution, we need to break down the specific problem from fermented shrimp industry, from raw material, process condition, and also the production process. So my friend, Dia Salvika and Nurul Mutmainah will explain it to you. The current state of fermented shrimp industries is causing a number of issues. The first one is about the raw material. The raw material is usually processed without applying standardized requirements and quality control. The second one is the production process. Fermented shrimp production consists of long processes without adapting good technology and proper handling, especially for the fermentation and drying process. And this uncontrolled process increases the risk of microbial contamination from the environment. Besides, it also decreases the sensory quality and also harms the consumers. These things make fermented shrimp unable to reach the standard requirement to compete in the modern market. So to overcome, uh, to overcome these problems, we propose three ideas such as developing quality inspection for incoming materials to make sure they meet the requirement. And the second one is designing optimum condition for critical process and the third applying high precision manufacturing system with adapting advanced technology in order to produce high quality product. And more detailed explanation about these ideas will be provided by Nurul. The first idea that we propose is to develop a system to inspect the quality of raw materials. We already know that producing a high quality product should start by using a good quality of raw materials. Shrimp, as the main ingredient must be fresh and come from the good source with maximum 5% of contaminant. Also, it should have a standard aroma and consumable. And another ingredient is salt, which should meet the standard requirement. It must be contain natrium chloride minimum 94%, must contain yodium and no metal contaminant. It is also necessary to build a storage space for the raw material utilizing low temperature to keep the freshness of stream for a long time. And from that, we already have the standardized raw material. And then the next step is we need to optimize the critical process. To optimize the condition process, we can simplify the process itself. We can skip the milling and the second drying and combine the milling process with the salt mixing. After that, fermentation is carried out. The fermentation process also can be optimized by using a specific microorganism in their optimum condition. Due to salt is also the used ingredient, halophilic bacterium such as Virgin bacillus halodentificans can be chosen. And after the fermentation process, the dough will be entered into the molding and drying process with an automatic machine. The production room also should have an ergonomic layout to make the production process more efficient and avoid product cross-contamination. And to achieve this optimum condition, the process should be supported by advanced technology to keep the precision of the process by applying a high precision of manufacturing system. 
To apply a high precision manufacturing system, we can start from the drying process. Drying that occur naturally in open space with the solar drying can cause a high risk of contamination. It can be replaced by using drying machine, such as an oven dryer with a thermocouple to control the temperature and the moisture loss. For the fermentation process, it is important to control the parameter such as temperature and humidity. So it is necessary to build a controlled fermentation room. The next is the molding process. It should be better if we utilize an automatic molding machine that is integrated with fluidized bed dryer as the final drying process in order to make the process more precise and efficient. Also, it will reduce a physical contact between worker and the product. By considering those three ideas, we believe it will give a great impact on the precision and quality of the fermented stream. This proposed idea will transform the traditional process of fermented stream into the modern one high precision process resulting the consistent product quality. The optimized process also raised the productivity rate up to 50% and increased production capacity by eight times. It also improves product safety. Furthermore, the adoption of technology can also help to reduce environmental pollution. The process should be documented in the standard operating procedure so that production can be done consistently. And because the majority of Indonesian people consume fermented stream on their daily basis, hopefully this idea and innovation can bring a significant economic impact, not only for the industry, but also for the people and the country. And finally, we hope we can support the SDGs of United Nations, that is decent work and economic growth and responsible consumption and production. Let's join the fight to make this project into the real one. We build the country together for a better world, for a better future. Thank you for your attention and we are very welcome if you have any discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, estate crops technology for team uh, very well done um i again open the floor to anyone for any questions um, i had a question about um, food safety and uh, consumers um, awareness about food safety in indonesia can you tell us a little bit about if that's an issue if there is a high or what kind of trust are, do consumers have in industry in terms of food safety? Oh, yeah. uh, so in the traditional fermented stream that produced traditionally that occur a natural, natural drying and spontaneous uh, fermentation, it can make the product uh, contaminated by the microbial pathogen like um, Staphylococcus aureus, Escheria coli, Listeria monocytes, and Salmonella TP. And we realize that this issue, uh, we realize that people nowadays are really aware to health. So maybe this issue will uh, make the traditional fermented stream can compete in the, uh, in the international market or even just in the modern market. Mm -hmm. May okay, I make you. a question, Lynn? Yes, please. So I, uh, I have, hello, thank you for your work. I, am, uh, I have some questions related to the drying. I would like to know the size of the pieces of the fermented shrimp that you are planning to dry? Because I saw the picture, but I don't know how much weight they, they have. Do you understand? Yeah? Yes, uh, we understand. Uh, okay. Uh, on the drying process in the traditional uh, traditional drying, the size of the uh, fermented stream is about 
two centimeters. Yeah, but uh, I don't know the area. So can you give me an idea of the weight? Oh, the weight. Uh, so in uh, traditional fermented stream, the every uh, every small and medium enterprise, every producer have a different a different standard of the uh, fermented stream that they produce. So in this idea, we want to standardize it and to make in, it in uh, what range in what range five grams 10 10 grams how many grams like a pea or like a, like like a block like a, a block like maybe uh, three and four centimeter the thick of the block yeah so this, I made this question because I think you have to be careful with the fluidized bed dryer because mm -hmm. fluidized bed, you can only dry small pieces. Otherwise, it's better to, to use a force hair dryer. It should be small pieces. Otherwise, you cannot fluidize heavy samples. And from the picture you show, it looked to me that they are not really small pieces. So fluidized oh. drying is used, for example, for peas, small pieces. Another thing is, since this project is for the sustainability, uh, as I understood uh, in your region, they are using uh, sun drying uh, and solar drying. So it's a, a way to, to dry also with the hair. And uh, it's not so expensive. So you use the solar, you may use some uh, motor to force the air, but it's uh, uh, um, a, a technique that you can also ensure the safety and uh, at the same time uh, cheaper because to implement this in these producers, with us bed should be quite expensive equipment and solar dryer you can be built in uh, in regions where the weather is um, adequate for that so this is just a suggestion yeah thank you thank you thank you thank you i think we have just time for one last question is about the feasibility for uh, local smes of optimizing or implementing this optimized fermentation process what is your opinion about if it's feasible for local SMEs and also connected also to the next question, considering that they are probably struggling with understanding food safety um, issues in their facilities? Could you just comment on that? Okay. In our opinion, uh, if traditional producer could use standardized procedure, uh, hygiene and control condition and use maybe a standard packaging material, it is possible uh, to compete international market, but due to small and medium enterprise have limited tools and technology like of hygienity, also and standardized procedures. So we create uh, the design by simplify the process, cutting the drying time, uh, applying modern technology. Uh, it will, um, it will reduce the production time above 15 percent and increase the productivity rate up to eight times and the cost production for the developing uh, fermented stream from the traditional into the modern world it's about for the modern fermented stream, it's about 50,000 Indonesian rupiah per kilogram. Uh, meanwhile, if the fer in traditional fermented stream, it's about 40,000 Indonesian rupiah. And in modern fermented stream has a higher production production cost, but uh, with a better quality, with a better quality, we can sell a modern fermented stream with higher cost and of course, a uh, developing modern industry will spend more investment costs, but investment costs at the beginning, but uh, it will give a more profit 
for us in the long term. And with the increasing productivity rate, the industry will absorb more raw material, stream as a raw material from the fisheries and it will enhance the fishery uh, welfare. Okay, great. Thank you very much for your presentation and your answers. Um, Thank you. I think also your last question was part, or last answer was partly an answer to the last question. So thank you very much. Um, thank you. Then we'll, thank you. Then we'll move on. Again, we go back to Portugal to Team Healthy Octopoda. Uh, you will give a presentation on optimization of canned octopus with tomato sauce. So you can. Hi, good afternoon. Hello. Do you have a presentation to show? Yeah. Can you see? Yes. Can you see the presentation? Yes, we see and hear you. Uh, well, currently there is a need to improve the nutritional quality of the food uh, products on the market and to manage the waste uh, generated in the food industry. So the question is, how can we respond to those needs? Considering, considering this challenge, we wanted to choose a product, a product with uh, high relevance and demand in the market, combining it with a sustainable and innovative ingredient. This way, we developed the project Healthy Octopoda, optimization of canned octopus with tomato sauce. Well, our team has three members, me, Alex Lima, and my two colleagues, João Almeida and Ana Mota. The three of us are first year master's students in food engineering at the Catholic University of Porto. And our main goal in this competition was to optimize a traditional food in order to contribute to a regional, uh, our regional food value chain. Well, cephalopods are experiencing a huge growth in the global market of seafood in, in terms of value and volume, with Portugal uh, holding the second biggest octopus consumption per capita in the world, uh, being uh, almost one point, uh, around 1.7 kilograms per year. To get a more precise idea, in 2020, 5,227 tons of octopus were caught in the Portuguese sea. Nowadays, we can find it in the market for the average price of six euros and five cents per kilogram. Uh, well, particularly, particularly in Portugal, the octopus is considered important for the national gastronomy. It can be prepared in various ways. Uh, for the example, in the recipe of octopus a la gagueu, served with potatoes and drizzled with hot olive oil. It is also nutrition, nutritionally interesting to include octopus in the diet since it is rich in omega-3 fat acids and its composition includes essential amino acids and, and antioxidants. When sold in a red sweet form, it's common to find canned products in the market due to its convenience of use. However, nowadays, the options of canned octopus with a tomato sauce uh, are, that are available have mainly soybean oil in their uh, list of ingredients. Uh, this way, for this project, we thought about uh, the possibility to, uh, for replacing the soybean oil for rapeseed oil. It's important to consider that a thermal process is required being necessary to analyze the pH of the product. 
After analyzing the pH of octopus with tomato sauce, we realized that uh, its value is higher than 4.5. In, in other words, during the thermic process of canned octopus with tomato sauce, sterilization is applied. The management of agri-food industry waste products represents a problem in waste disposal due to excessive production and limited use by the industry. In Portugal, there are about 47,000 tons per year of grape seeds are discarded from vine crops. Grape seeds contain an edible oil known as grapeseed oil, rich in linoleic uh, acid, proteins, and phenolic compounds with antioxidant properties. In Portugal, 700 million liters of wine are produced annually, being the fourth wine producer country in Europe. This way, grapes are considered a waste product of this industry. In the past, grapeseed oil was extracted using organic solvents or mechanical pressing techniques. However, high working temperatures were a limitation to preserve the quantity and the quality of the obtained product. Nowadays, supercritical fluid extraction uh, with carbon dioxide is a green and low cost alternative that produces a high quality product compared to mechanical pressing, overcoming the previous limitations. Considering this method, it is possible to obtain grapeseed oil through a process with environmentally friendly protocols. On the other hand, it is important to mention that inclusion of grapeseed oil increases the nutritional value of the final product. When analyzing the values of fatty acids present in grapeseed oil and soybean oil presented in this table, it is possible to compare their major differences. First, we are able to verify that grapeseed oil has a lower amount of saturated fat and a higher level of polyunsaturated fatty acids in its composition. From the polyunsaturated fatty acids group, linoleic acid is present in the greatest quantity and it's associated with the promotion of human health. It was also found that grapeseed oil contains a high content of vitamin E ranging from 1 to 53 milligrams per 100 uh, grams of oil, uh, a considerable content of tocopherol, higher than that found in soybean oil, and a large amount of phenolic compounds, including flavonoids, carotenoids, phenolic acids, tannins, and steel beams. The most relevant bioactive property of phenolic compounds is their antioxidant role. Uh, the antioxidant uh, property is associated with the removal of free radicals, decrease of oxidative stress, and decrease of the low density lipoprotein levels, improving the functioning of the immune system. The decrease of low density uh, lipoprotein levels should suggest a cardioprotective uh, potential and an anti inflammatory capability of grapeseed oil being associated with benefits in the treatment of chronic diseases and in the reduction of mortality and morbidity. According to some studies, other canned products uh, such as sausages were found to be healthier when grapeseed oil was added into uh, its list of ingredients. So um, to finish our presentation, uh, it is important to reinforce the main advantages of replacing soybean oil with grapeseed oil in canned octopus with tomato sauce. First, uh, there aren't any food products that include grapeseed oil uh, as an ingredient on the Portuguese market, making it an innovative proposal. Also, we were able to, th uh, to think about a nutritionally healthier and more sustainable option compared to the traditional canned octopus with tomato sauce using a product from the wine production that is barely used in the food industry, contributing to the sust sustainability. As mentioned before, the consumption of canned products is increasing due to its convenience of use, contributing to the product being widely used. Besides, cephalopods are experiencing a huge growth in the global market of seafood in value and volume. Furthermore, the large wine production in Portugal promotes an increase in the waste of grape seeds, giving the optimized canned octopus product a potential applicability in the market. 
It is also important to consider that the impact will be extremely positive to the environment due to the use of waste products from the wine industry and that the new product offers a healthier option to the consumers because of its nutritional quality. So we conclude our presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you have any questions, you may feel free to ask them now. Thank you. Thank you, Alex and Anna. Uh, very interesting uh, product. We already have a question from Postop. Super critical extraction process is expensive and more focusing high value products compared to oil. I don't know if, if that's a question or, or if um, if someone uh, is it, it, it that. means that normally you, you you are using for high value products and not for the production of oil. You understand? Uh, I don't know. I I think the connection was interrupted. I don't know if uh, <laughs> I I couldn't hear um, your full question. Um, do you hear me? Yes, yes. yes. No, I say just say that supercritical uh, extraction is more used for the production of high value products because it, the process is expensive and not for oil. You see? Uh, oh. Actually, um, this type of method is not used uh, in all countries yet for this uh, type of oil. Uh, however, we found a study that um, compares different extraction methods, um, and it's possible to conclude that the supercritical fluid extraction process actually can be economic um, and rentable from a 50 liter production, depending on the selling price of the product. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. But it's important to consider. Yes. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I don't think so. So thank you very much. Thank and you. Thank you. We'll thank move you. on. Uh, I hope you're still awake in Thailand. <laughs> it's, uh, it's very late. I think um, the next team is uh, Team Bermi from Chula Longkorn University, I think in Bangkok. You're giving a presentation on modernizing DADI through a comprehensive standard plan. So please go ahead. Can you see our slides? Yes, if you can just put, yes, now we see them well. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Um, when would I start? Yes, please go ahead. I oh, thank you. Dadi is a traditional fermented milk product in Indonesia, which has existed for centuries. Despite the lack of pasteurization, it never had a report of food poisoning and product failure. So considering worldwide standards, we identified three main problems. First, lack of scientific understanding on the full microbiology of Dadi. Second, low awareness of product among the people due to low marketing and lack of information dissemination. And third, there are no standards related to training and production. Our team hopes to solve these problems by first, applying GMPs, by using these GMPs and omic technology. Second, incorporation of SME programs and social media. And third, cooperation with higher educational institutions and government agencies. We desire that this project will lead to increased consumer confidence and trust, bringing to a surge in consumption. It would also preserve culture, and create stability in regional cooperation. Lastly, it would enhance the economy and create resilient local industries. This is modernizing DADI through a comprehensive standard plan, and this is our project presentation. Did you know only 0.19% of Indonesians know about DADI, and only 0.1% of them have tasted it? Almost none of non Indonesians know about daddy. So this data confirms that daddy is still significantly unknown in Indonesia in the world. 
So to give you more understanding about what is dari, in the traditional fermented water buffalo milk, which is in a traditional way in bamboo tubes, and despite being produced in septic condition, it has never been reported to cause illness. Rather the opposite, it provides many proven health benefits. What are those health benefits? It can help with creating better immune system. It helps with digestive system, and it and it can it has anti-inflammatory and anti anti carcinogenic due to the abundance of bioactive nutritional compounds and probiotics. So to give you uh, uh, the ideas how we can modernize study, some of the objectives of our project is first to create a comprehensive food safety standard, second, to improve trade and establish the production in industry level, and three, to incorporate education, training, and increase the publicity of study. How we will modernize study? We have three general steps of study modernization. The first step is food safety and nutrition plan. The second step is business development plan. And the third step is government law plan. So let's take a look for the first step for modernization of the study. So we will try to make the standardization by using the good manufacturing processing or the GMP. We will also use the full microbiological identification by utilizing the omics technology. For this one, we will also be cooperate with higher education institution through the program called KKN or Kulia Kerja Nyata, or in English, we can say it as the Student Community Service Program. So in this program, the student will be placed in a certain area in order to help the people in that area to obtain the knowledge. So in this case, the student will be placed in the area to help the dairy producer to make the dairy producer know about the GMP and apply the GMP for dairy processing. So let's take a look for the dairy traditional making. So for the dairy traditional making, it consists of three parts. The first one is bamboo preparation. The second one is milk preparation. And the third one is the dairy processing. So let's take a look at these pictures. As you can see, for the dairy making, it still use the organic equipment, such as the bamboo tube, as the container for the fermentation. However, as we can see, we can also see that the dairy processing or dairy fermentation are doing in the septic condition because for the producer are not using any glove or mask during the fermentation. That's why we are trying to improve the safety and the quality of the dairy by applying the GMP that we can try to help for the dairy producer. These are the sample of the GMP that we are trying to apply for the dairy producer. It consists of the first one about the personal hygiene. So we need to regularly wash hands, wear masks and the glove during the processing. The second one is processing hygiene. So the buffalo's health must be checked. And also we, they will use the filtering the milk before the filling to each stuff. And the third one is about the facilities and the building. So it's about the clean lines of the facilities and the building that they will use and also the equipment that they will use in the fermentation of the daddy itself. So regarding the omics technology, so what is omics technology? We have problem, right, with consumer confidence and full knowledge of what is the microbiology of daddy. So we have this full, um, full omics technology. First with genomics, we're going to use net next generation sequencing technology for probiotic function, virulence factors, and full genomic sequencing so that we would really understand if there are viruses and what other components are there in the daddy. Second, using transcriptomics, using microarray technique and RNA sequencing for us to understand the stress responses of the microbiology and all the microorganisms, transcriptional responses to changes in temperature, and host microbes and teratomics. We go to proteomics also for us to understand identification of the bacterial profile, rapid pathogen detection, profiling of stress conditions, peptide biomarkers, and vitamin determination using Maldetov MS, Bottoms Electroporesis, and CAP HPLC. Lastly, with metabolomics using NMR, LSMS, and CEMS, we would be able to identify 
potential biomarkers, comparison of different strains, molecular traceability, flavors, and textures. So with this in hand, we can see in the picture that using the omics technology will help I understand microbiota in probiotics and host modulation. In the dairy, we will even identify how fast the fermentation would happen. We could actually like accelerate it by understanding the acidification speed, proto-cooperation, uh, texture, and development. And lastly, selecting probiotic strain-specific health targets. So after understanding the microbiology part, we can go to the business development plan, which is composed mainly of two things, small medium enterprise programs and the social media and influencers. So what is the small medium enterprise program? So in Indonesia, we have this contents of the small medium enterprise program for starting a business and business registration, because we know that farmers and those producers need to understand what are the requirements to start a business. Second, basic taxation and basic bookkeeping for them to understand the flow of income. It's very important for them also to know if they're increasing or uh, gaining money and how much. And digital marketing and online selling. As you know, 82% of all products around the world have online platforms. And all of them have found an increase at least 32 to 35% increase in income because of the online platforms. That's why this is also very important. After that, we go to the government. We know that law is law. In order for that to be accepted by the, inter, uh, by the entire Indonesian content, content archipelago, it has to have standards and policies that, that, is, um, that is needed for it to be accepted. And the government will be able to stand this standardization and link NGOs and private sectors for better awareness for among peoples. So we will be wondering, what is this entire project? So it's composed of three, food safety and nutritional plan. And this is like understanding the GMP creation that through the standardization, second, nutritional value determination and food safety through omics technology and development of trade industry that you see in the SME programs and social media and influencers. And lastly, with the government's cooperation and uh, HEIs for creation of regulations and international standards for trade and linking producers with NGOs. So you would be wondering, why do we have all these three? Why not just one? So in 2017, there was a project called the Daddy Initiative Project we contacted the proponents of this one in Indonesia and one in Netherlands, and both of them said it failed. So why did it fail? The proponents mentioned that it did not succeed because they only focused on making a standard plan without considering other stakeholders. Our team believes that alone, we can do little. Together, we can do so much. Because if we do not row together, the boat will not go. So if the HEI and producers will not work, the GMP standardization, there will be no progress. If the HEIs will not research more on food safety and microbiology, consumers will not have confidence and trust, and the international standards will not be made, especially in Indonesia. If business plan will not be considered, it might end up in bankruptcy. And without social media, which is a great tool for information dissemination, Daddy would remain unknown. There is immense power when a group of people with similar interests work together towards the same goal. And just like all members of one body work together, we can establish a framework of agreements among stakeholders for a stimulated Indonesia that does not forget its members and its culture. And this is our presentation. Thank you very much. Partial list of references. Thank you. Thank you so much, Team Fami, Michael, Asisa, and Edward for this really interesting, enthusiastic presentation. Um, are there any questions? Does anyone have any questions? Maybe yes. I can make a question. Um, this is a product based on uh, milk of a buffalo, right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I my uh, curiosity is um, if there are a lot of uh, buffalo in Indonesia, if it's if you have a high production of milk from buffalo because here in this region of the the world there is not no buffalo <laughs> i asked the question if yes uh, if there are a lot of buffaloes and if the production is large so okay uh, so currently like there's also one of the um the possible like bottleneck of the projects that the buffaloes right now are in decreasing decline because of the lack of um, consumption. Not a lot of people wants to um, knows about that and there's a lot less production. So like our together with our professor, they say that 
using the business model and understanding if there will be greater, what they call this, greater consumption, there will be an increase in demand, which would also help the farmers and the government to, to breed the buffaloes also. Uh, the, are there scientific studies that uh, show that this fermented uh, drink has uh, much higher health uh, properties than other products in the market? Uh, there's um, there's currently like not a much studies about it, although it had studies because of the presence of the microorganisms. So basically, this is Dadi. They studied all the microorganisms of Dadi among different regions, and based on the organism present, they checked on previous like journals, for example, the presence of Enterococcus phacos IS27526, which has been known to have anti-cancer and anti-tumor properties. So because of its presence there, we could consider that it, it may have those properties also. Although it would be good, Ma'am Christina, that it would have more studies about it to compare to um, other products such as yogurt also. Now, now it's, uh, I'm going to make a question that is this question of uh, the Devil, devil, I don't know, just devil, yeah. devil. You, you answer that uh, if people uh, know the product even more, uh, farmers will uh, breed more buffalo and then produce more milk. But yeah. nowadays, there is a trend, at least in Europe, not to consume uh, because of the, the, the impact on the environment of uh, animal production is, is very high. So there is a high trend for plant-based products. Uh, and I'm uh, last month I was also in Singapore and I know that in Asiatic countries, you are also um, very much keen on plant-based products. So how is, are the consumers in Indonesia going to react on this if they can maybe I don't know, have some milk produced uh, from some different nuts instead of, instead of um, sorry, because it's my phone number. Okay. Instead Try of to answer. plant based. Sorry. <laughs> Just a, it's, yeah. it's a challenge because if you have to defend your work, you should have some uh, nice argument yeah. for that. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I will try to give some insight. So if you compare the buffalo milk with the commercial cow milk, which has been proven that uh, it creates a lot of uh, uh, em emission. But if you compare that with the buffalo milk, which is uh, the buffaloes itself are uh, kept in a very traditional way and they fed with the grass uh, in the local field. So they don't consume as much uh, energy compared to the traditional, uh, compared to the modern of cows um, farming. Yeah. Um, I would also answer in economic terms. So like um, we, we studied also like different, like the cost in the Philippines, in Thailand, in Indonesia, the cost usually of milk, the cow's milk, those milk is usually only $1.5 per um, one liter. The, in the packaging. However, the cost of like milk products is $3. So like, considering like not all nations in Asia are rich, for example, Thailand, Philippines, Indonesia, Myanmar, Laos, they're still considered third world countries. And I think it would be a burden for those people if we ask them to take plant-based products, which would cost around times two, right? For example, it's only $1.5 for the milk animal-based product, but for the animal-based product, it would be $3. And considering poverty and like third world countries, I don't think it would be fair, like, you know, like if we would ask them to buy the plant-based products also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. There is another question, but I think we have to move on. Uh, it's from Peter about uh, the packaging, uh, if you go for online selling, but maybe you could answer that uh, in the chat, please, team family. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank very you. much. All right, then we go across the ocean to South America, to Peru. Uh, we have Team Quinoa. You're giving a presentation on uh, the improvement of quinoa drying technology using infrared to keep more nutrients. Hello. Yes, I'm going to share my, my screen. Great. Yes. Um, can Thank you see you. my presentation? Yes, we see it. Okay. So I'm going to start. 
Did you know that quinoa is a Peruvian superfood that contains all essential amino acids, vitamins, minerals, and bioactive compounds with high antioxidant capacity? However, most of its production is developed by small farmers who lack technological knowledge and also organization. In this way, in solar drying, inadequate processing causes uh, the loss of 30% of its value due to contamination and prolonged environmental exposure. And convection drying also represents a high energy consumption and a reduction of bioactive compounds. We are Kino team, and our proposal is to use infrared radiation as a drying alternative to obtain a safe quinoa with better nutritional values and a greater profitability. With this technology, it is possible to obtain a fast and uniform heating, 38% less energy consumption than conventional drying and preserve 90% of bioactive compounds. In this way, we modernize quinoa processing techniques, optimizing performance and nutritional qualities to apply it to the food industry. We are the quinoa team from Peru, made up of Pia, Paola, and myself, Juanita Flo. Our proposal for the modernization of a traditional food is improving of quinoa drying technology using infrared to preserve more nutrients. Quinoa is a safe superfood with multiple nutritional benefits, mainly antioxidant combos, highlighting its pasancaya majority. Our project seeks to make these nutritional attributes reduce energy consumption with the least economic expense through the use of infrared drying to possibly influence the quinoa value change. As part of the production process, the quinoa goes through continued washing in order to eliminate saponin. Inadequate and absolute traditional agriculture techniques reveal inefficient, inefficient productive and economic in this, affecting the final price, which in nine years has been reduced by 93% affected profitability. In this production, uh, then the solar drying occurs where it's not possible to control the temperature due to unpredictable weather condition and the problem exposure time are the losses of nutrients. There is a high risk of contamination with finding purits being prone to contamination by, by mycotoxigenic fungi, which can lead to either acute or chronic poison. In convection, in convection drying, the risk of contamination is reduced, but its main disadvantage is that the quinoa is generated superficiality and is not enough to eliminate the water. This makes the process more expensive and generates nutrient losses, which reduce competitiveness. Infrared, a feasible and sustainable solution that contributes to development of the product of the production chain is the modern modernization of far infrared drying. This being an innovative drying uh, method to counteract this difficult where energy penetrates a material at a small depth and is then turned to into health. That's allowing to preserve the aroma, color, and nutrients. The simplicity of the equipment allows to optimize the farmer process, facilitating its commercialization. Infrared. In our preliminary study, this technology was used at uh, 60 Celsius degrees in three quinoa variety, Pasancaya, Huancayo, and Guaylas, in order to make a comparison with the traditional convection method. Infrared drying technology, unlike traditional drying, has the following advantages, short drying time with high energy efficient, easy and uniform heating of the material and good quality of the final product. So the test of bioactive compounds uh, using both drying techniques show that infrared is better preserved these components, both in phenolic compounds with PPC and in antioxidant capacity, the ABTS, as we can see in table two. And also in both cases, the, the Pesankaya variety, this one, it was uh, the one that maintained the best values. So 
During drying, structural modifications occur, such as the rupture of the cell wall of the food, which facilitates the release of phenolic compounds. These occur both in solar and in convection drying. And in addition to the reduction of phenolic acids and antioxidant uh, activity. While in infrared uh, radiation drying, Bayer maintains these components without significant losses. Uh, as we can see in this graph, the results obtained in the study reflected the, the, the significant difference in terms of content of phenolic compounds. It is demonstrating that the technology is superior to convection drying in terms of conservation of the bioactive compounds. Also, if we can see here in the second graph, significant difference were observed in terms of this time antioxidant capacity being uh, the Pesenkaya variety, the one that preserved the highest value in both drying methods. This shows that the variety, that this variety has greater resistance, adaptability, and advantages in terms in, in terms of bioactive compounds. So, innovation, potential applicability, and impact. Traditional drying techniques have already mentioned limitations. Both the literature and our results showed a higher concentration of phenolic a compound in infrared dry compared to other technologies. This being a potential application because in addition to reduce the risk of contamination, more stable, homogeneous product with better nutritional values are obtained, positively impacting and the consumer with this technology, processing is improved, commercial intermediaries are reduced, that generating rated competitiveness. This true technical uh, training that will strengthen the productive process, strengthening uh, the identity of farmers, thus promoting the commitment, participation, and inclusion of communities, favoring their productive chain and promoting food security with sovereignty. A strategic uh, obje objective uh, of the project, both in solar and convective drying, is nutritional quality is affected with emphasis on the loss of bio bio bioactive compounds. Uh, the, technolo the technological modernization of drying by infrared radiation is then proposed being a fast, uniform drying without risk of contamination which the conservation of the nutraceutical characteristics, which has a lower energy conception and reduced environmental impact, improving its production cost. According to the references and the results, infrared drying requires less exposure time, like what it had a conception of the 16 kilowatt hours while infrared drying of 9.9 .9 kilowatt hours, which represented a 38% energy saving and therefore economic, and I some cases reaching a 50%. In the current global agri-food system requires the modernization of Food seeking to enhance its nutraceutical, nutraceutical nature. To achieve this, it is important to have the intervention of the state in order to implement technologies in favor uh, of the traditional food industry, providing entry barriers that protect national production, creating product productive integration alliances to have better access to credit. Uh, to new point business, making them more competitive. This was our presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, we are here. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Pia, Paola, and Juanita, and Team Kinua. Very interesting presentation and very nice pictures also you showed us in the video. Um, we have some a few minutes, two minutes for for questions. So any, I think the last one was a response to the last team. Um, I I had a question about um, 
purchasing this infrared radiation. I think you mentioned in the end, it could be an option for farmers to join forces and to go into like community joint ventures to purchase this machine together. Um, is, is that something you think is, uh, you have talked to farmers about it, whether something like that would be realistic or feasible? Yes, of course. The, the, uh, one of the ideas is that, that communities can join, like associate themselves to to make this possible, also with with some support from the state. And yes, we contacted a, a community that was in charge of an engineer from our university, and he told us he was working with this community. So he looks like very interested in our idea. So it just was a, an an idea. An, an initial idea, but at least it was the the interest from from them. Yeah, great. That's good to hear. Are there any other questions? Anyone who wants to ask something? Okay, it doesn't seem like it. Okay, well, thank you so much to the three of you. Um, thank you. Thank you. All right, then we move on. We have still two teams to go. The second last is team wrap up from Slovenia, from the University of Ljubljana on um, the problem of wasting high nutritious food industry byproducts in uh, Slovenia. So do we have team yes, wrap up? Hi. Yes. Hello. Hello. Hi. Does any one of you want to share presentation? Yeah, I think that Gospar should, but he froze, I think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. Just a second. If not, I can. Oh, okay. okay. He's here. Okay. Please go ahead. Uh, I'm not sure if you can hear me. Uh, can now you? we hear you well. Yes, we hear okay, you. Okay, well. We said we hear him. It was too early. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think he has a problems with connection. Yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. Can you take over, Eva, or you want uh, to be? I mean, he has to, he is starting with elevator elevator pitch, but I can go ahead with the presentation. But he has to click it, you know. Ah, okay. Oh, okay. He's sharing the screen. Wait. Or uh, do you you think we should take the next team and we come maybe, back to you? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? And we will come back. Yeah. Okay. So then we take team Dead Spread from Mexico. Are you here? Hello. Hello. Uh, sorry, I had a problem with my connection. Oh. So you do want to try again or? Uh, Eva, could you share the presentation? Yep, just a second. I have to find it. Okay. Okay, that should go. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, great. So, hello. Uh, we are wrap up team and we think all of you like beer and beer industry makes a lot of byproducts. In our country, we also have a wide production of pumpkin oil with the same problem of massive byproduct leftover. And we plan to save that problem. We are making high fiber and high protein tortillas, which are fun, tasty, and innovative. The main ingredients are spent grain and pumpkin oil press cake. The production of our tortillas is easy scalable and ready for mass production. With our tortillas, we are not offering just a great meal for you and your family, but also saving a great problem of food waste. We offer tortillas in three different colors with three different flavors. I'm sure you would like them. Hello, my name is Eva, and I'm also a member of Wrap Up Team. 
our story actually began between a conversation between me. Uh, we have a farm that makes pumpkin seed oil and between Gaspar, who is a beer maker, you will see the photos uh, in the presentation. Uh, each of us actually had our own uh, high quality waste raw material. Uh, and these are brewers spent grain that are really rich with dietary fiber. So on every 10 liters of beer, we are left with two kilos of brewers spent grain and pumpkin seed oil press cake uh, that's really, really rich with proteins and approximately one liter of 100% pumpkin seed oil leaves us like two kilos of uh, pumpkin seed oil press cake. So here are some pictures of pumpkin seed oil production. Uh, pumpkins are grown in our own, own fields. Um, they are salted, roasted, and then the oil is pressed, as you can see in the middle picture. And we are left with an enormous amount of byproduct that is currently not being used. And here we see Gaspar in his brewery. Um, so the craft beer production in Slovenia is growing really fast, in, like in two years. Um, because of great, great conditions um, for producing barley and hop. Uh, and we also get a really high quality byproduct from making beer. Unfortunately, these byproducts are still a waste and uh, mostly a concern for the manufacturer. If they're used, they're used for uh, animal feed. Uh, and in this, we saw a central problem and issue uh, that directly concerns a big part of Slovenian agricultural ground. And after all um, considerations and service, we came up with uh, our product. These are wrap-up tortillas. We made them in three different flavors. Uh, so pumpkin seed oil, turmeric and red paprika, and beetroot and honey. Uh, these are tortillas with high content of, of dietary fiber and proteins. And we uh, are also very happy. This was really hard to achieve. It's uh, important to emphasize that these tortillas are wrapped in 100% recyclable materials. So when you ask yourself, how does someone come up with the idea to use those previously unused raw materials? It all starts with our small and beautiful country of Slovenia, which you can see on this map. In Slovenia, we sure do love uh, beer and we also love pumpkin oil. Slovenia is divided in a few smaller regions. So what can you get from each region, we ask ourselves. The central and the northern region make most of the beer. So there we get the brewer's pan grain. Then we have the southern region, which has a lot of fields and the best flower in Slovenia. Then there is the eastern regions with pumpkin oil and from there we get the pumpkin oil press cake. But then you ask yourself, why did we leave the Western part blank? Well, we didn't. There lies the fourth ingredient that we are yet planning to use. That is wine pomace, which is left from the production of wine. As the region is very rich in wine and the pomace is very rich in many nutrients like fiber, polyphenols, etc. So to mention, this is not our first competition. It all started when you sign up for Equatorphalia at the start when the team formed, we thought things will go smooth, everything will be easy. Well, we were so wrong. We had to check all the things you can see on this slide to get to where we are today, but we're happy we had to do that. Uh, we learned so many things and we made a good product. Also, we won the third place in Ecotrophilia 2022. So we have a good product. That is, that is it, right? Well, don't worry, we are not finished yet. We have many plans for the future. Previously, I mentioned that we want to include more byproducts of the food industry. Uh, also, we need to optimize our product, like mostly shelf life and the flavor. Yet also we are planning on having a short production chain and local ingredients. We don't want to limit ourselves just on tortillas. So we will expand our assortment of product. Finally, and I think the crucial point is connecting with other food industry uh, companies. We don't see them as competition, but as business partners. One of them may be Grashka, which you already heard of. Now to tell you who we actually are. On this picture, you can see Luca, Eva, Meta, and me, Gasper. We are four students of food science technology and with four very different mindsets. We are also living in four very different parts of Slovenia. And maybe that was the key that made us great, make a great product. 
But nothing would be perfect without our mentor, Lmoica Kuroshec from Biotechnical Faculty of Slovenia. She supported us in every step of the way. In the future, we want to bring even more uh, people in our story uh, from different fields to help us with the things we food science students don't really know much about. So what happens when you pick a package of tortillas in the store? The immediate effect is a great lunch for you and your loved ones. Our tortillas go great with meat or vegan options. We also desserts. We tried everything, of course. Uh, but our group vision is not just to create a delicious product. It's also to spice up already existing uh, local healthy food options with incorporating Slovenian food waste materials of high nutritional value that are being thrown away. So wrap up your meal and enjoy the day. Thank you very much, Team Rebop, Gaspar, Riva, and Duka. Um, I will, we have one question, let's see, from Christoph. If tortillas are usual food products consumed in Slovenia, and it perhaps you suggest perhaps you should target Slovenian traditional products. Um, Can you when, comment on that? When we started to develop the product, we started with two bright products that we had. And then we made uh, an analysis, we made uh, forms that we handed out to people. And most of the people said tortillas would be something that they would see these uh, byproducts in. So that's why we decided for tortillas. And uh, maybe sounds weird, but in Slovenia, people really like tortillas. We have them in every store in many ways. So that's it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Did you do some uh, uh, like consumer tests on the on the taste or the sensory properties? Um, yes, we had some um, some panels. Uh, we also handed out the tortillas in our faculty uh, to around fifty people, and we get we get got those uh, feedbacks, and we made our product better. We mm -hmm. changed some things, uh, but we are yet planning to making more of those. Uh, consumers reviews and to get more info. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. May I make a question? Maybe? Yes, please. Um, uh, the question is related. To, if I understood, you plan to collect the, the byproducts from uh, different companies, smaller companies, is it? Uh, did I understand well? Uh, it actually depends on the byproduct. Uh, if we talk about uh, pumpkin seed oil press cake, uh, you you can actually choose an oil maker. They they make a lot of uh, a lot of waste product. Uh, but we were just discussing for the brewery part for the spent grain. We will choose a brewery that makes uh, one kind of beer and is is being consistent. So that that waste product is being also consistent. That's very important for our taste and the quality of our product. So we will choose uh, firstly a smaller brewer so that we can grow with them, and then maybe a bigger one that has one kind of beer and it's making it throughout the whole year so that we can can get a, um, a, a high end uh, quality uh, source of product for the whole year. One of the, the things I think many times uh, on, uh, because there are many, uh, there's a lot of research of people that study applications uh, of uh, different byproducts and they, okay, they propose uh, an application in different products, but when you go do the scale up, uh, do you anticipate difficulties in keeping the product clean and not uh, having, for example, fermentations and uh, so uh, it's so the same. Uh, I mean, uh, it's not straightforward. It's not like preparing some uh, small quantity. Uh, when you go to a bigger scale, I think you have to consider other complexity in your process. This is. Um, what I say, yeah, because uh, you have the uh, you have then your unity operation, or I mean your factory, and you receive different uh, sources, and uh, how do you plan, for example, to to keep the quality and not having uh, the product being contaminated, this byproduct contaminated. I don't know if you have thought about that. 
when you if you think to make a scale up of of this this is general it's not in particular to your project it, yeah, i think it's I think many times about uh, th this difficulty for for many for many other solutions that are being proposed at the moment of utilizing uh, utilizing different byproducts from food industry. So, if I understand you correct, you were wondering if we will have many problems uh, scaling up with the source of. Uh, our, with our byproducts that we are we're going to use and stuff like that. Yeah, we have already talked to bigger makers of the food, not tortillas, but other food. And we got some tips like uh, agreements with the bigger, like, like the friend said, like bigger brewers that always make the same beer. It's the same grain bill for their beer. like, And maybe also with the other producers, like some agreements that the product will always be consistent. Also, we want to make our own analysis and that will make us uh, make us keep the the quality at the highest level okay thank you i think we just have time just for one more question from Akarin. she asks if you consider the energy use for drying the brewer spent grain and pumice compared to using dried products so it doesn't balance out the environmental benefits of using a byproduct um, yes, uh, that were that was a big problem when we were starting on planning this production. But we found out that uh, the drying drying with heat is very power consumption. It's uh, high energy consumption. Then we decided to first press the spent grain. Uh, we el eliminate a lot of water with just pressing. The, the pressing doesn't use uh, so much energy. And then when there is not a lot of moisture left in the grain, we use the heat for uh, for the, the, the operation of the remaining water. So that is our way to keeping the energy bill down. Okay, okay. okay thank, thank you. Thank you very much. There are two more questions, but we don't have time for answering them here. But if you, have, if you can answer them in the writing, then it would be fine. Thank you. Good, thank you, team wrap up. And then we can move on to the last but not least team that spread from Mexico. You are giving a presentation on sorry, um, on a healthy on pandemware to a healthy redesign with pre-Hispanic ingredients of a delicious Mexican tradition. Yep. Please. Um, hello everyone. Uh, I would like to start the presentation with a question. Uh, has anyone heard from Dia de los Muertos or Day of the Dead? Uh, if the answer is yes or no, Day of the Dead is an important Mexican holiday where foods with high energy density are consumed. One of these foods is Pan de Muerto or Day of the Dead. Uh, or Day of the Dead bread. Since overweight and obesity are problems that the Mexican population suffer with, it is very important to find ways to make our foods healthier. That's why our product's main, main objective is to partially redesign the traditional pan de muerto recipe by partially replacing some of the ingredients for healthier pre-Hispanic pre alternatives. And good morning, good afternoon, and, or evening to everyone. We are the Spread Team from Mexico, and we're excited to present our project uh, Pan de Muerto, a healthy redesign with pre-Hispanic ingredients of a delicious Mexican tradition. First of all, our, the members of our team are Dulce Machado, Alejandro Trujillo, Monica Garcia, and me, Yolanda Preciado. Our, our mentor is the doctor Ana Maria Calderón de la Barca. Um, so basically, Day of the Dead is a holiday where us Mexicans and some of the um, and some other Latin countries remember our, our loved ones who have sadly passed away uh, by commemorating this holiday. Uh, one way to celebrate this is to create an altar of the dead where we prepare foods for our loved ones. And one of these foods is a pan de muerto, um, who is also known as dead bread. This bread, aside from being a food product, has a beautiful meaning behind it. It's circular shape, represents the cycle of life and death. The ornaments on top represent the bones and skull of our loved ones. And lastly, the, the placement of these ornaments 
are basically signals to the gods. But why is all of this important? Like I said before, Day of the Dead is a holiday in November, which starts with uh, the holiday season for Mexicans. Um, around 71% of the Mexican adults suffer with overweight and obesity, a fact that I said earlier. <laughs> During this season, um, around 50% of the weight gain of the entire year happens, uh, which means uh, the, this, these foods are responsible for this. For this. Um, in that bread is not only consumed during the month of November, it is also consumed months before. There's even people who start preparing their own dead bread uh, before and before the month of November, around September. And this bread, this bread contains around 469 kilocalories per 100 grams. And a portion usually weighs around 150 grams, which means that the normal portion will be around 700 kilocalories. And so our aim of this project is to redesign the traditional pan de muerto recipe by replacing wet, wet flour and sugar with healthy pre-Hispanic ingredients such as amaranth, sweet potato, and chia mucilage. Our specific objectives are to reduce the energy density and glycemic index of the product. Next, we incorporate antioxidant compounds in fiber into our bread. And next, we look for additional applications of the alternative crops produced by small producers in Mexico, which means we will generate more jobs with this project. First, we use pop amaranth seeds, chia seeds, and orange sweet potato. We process the ingredients to get uh, chia mucilage, amaranth flour, and sweet potato flour. Also, we use commercial wet flour. We did the analysis to see the nutrients and bioactive compounds of the ingredients, and we mix all of these ingredients to see the dog properties and to get a prediction model. Once we had the model, we begged to prepare the traditional and or new blend for pan de muerto. Alejandro, we can't hear you. Yeah. Alejandro, you're mute. We don't hear you. Sorry about that. The, the prediction model were adjusted by mixing time, peak all resistance, setback, and breakdown. The quadratic factors were, were lost by adjusting, and that's why they're not shown in this table. Therefore, only we, we're showing the linear factors, which are for uh, wet amaranth and sweet potato. And also, we show the interaction between them, because those remain in the uh, uh, in the models. The interaction between wheat and amaranth uh, significantly affected mixing time and pictal resistance and setback. And this is explaining 73% of the variation, 79% of the variation of the uh, pictal resistance, and 76% of the setback variation. In addition, uh, the linear terms were significant uh, for pictal resistance the interaction of wheat and amaranth was negative for mixing time peak load resistance, while the same interaction was positive for, for setback. And finally, the interaction of, of amaranth and sweet potato was significantly positive for breakdown with the highest um, R squared value of 86% uh, of the variability explained by the proposed model. And these are the traditional and new blend recipes for pan de muerto. We use less wet flour in our new blend, and we put amaranth flour and orange sweet potato flour and chia mucilage. For both recipes, we use the same amount of yeast, sugar, salt, and milk, eggs, and yolks. And we use less butter in our new blend to reduce the lipids content. This is the pan de muerto appearance. We bake both of them and we use the receipts that we showed before. And on the left, you can see the traditional dead spread or pan de muerto with some sugar on top. 
And on the right side is our new blend, which is more colorful because the orange uh, from sweet potato and it looks really nice and it tastes really, really good. Here, we can see the composition of traditional and new blend of pan de muerto. We have more protein percent and ashes percent in our new blend and the ashes percent increase because the mineral content is mayor in our blend. The lipids, the lipids percent decrease, but this percent includes all the unsaturated fats coming from amaranth, which is rich in this and compared to the traditional blend, which contains saturated fat uh, due to the exclusive use of butter. Also, the carbs reduce in our blend. And finally, we have a reduced energy for every 100 grams in our pan de muerto. Here we can see some properties of both pan de muerto. The fiber increased almost six grams for every 100 grams in our blend. And the total phenols decrease in the new blend. And the beta carotens increase from traces in the traditional to 1,123 micrograms on the new blend of pan de muerto. And the DPPH, which is an indicated for antioxidants, increase on the new blend and the glycemic index decrease in our blend. In the technological and nutritional quality, quality of the dead spread, we have better appearance, protein quality, fiber content, beta carotens, antioxidant content, and for the glycemic index could be reduced compared to the traditional. The results of the sensory characteristic, according to the hedionic scale, we can see that the color, texture, flavor, and acceptability show better response in the new blend than the traditional recipe. And well, for conclusion, we can say that the op optimized blend with 68.7% with 22.7% with amaranth and 8.6% of the sweet potato and the 1.52% of the chia mucilagu produce a dead spread with a good appearance. This bread had a better protein quality, higher content of fiber, Pro vitamin A and bioactivity compounds with a good antioxidant capacity and a lower glycemic index. Thank you for uh, listening to us, and we remain open for questions and debates. Thank you so much, that's Brett. That's a very interesting your presentation. Uh, we have two minutes for questions to your team. Any questions? I have just a question uh, regarding the consumption of this product. Is this is it? It is uh, is it pro produced um, consumed only during this uh, uh, celebration? This uh, death uh, uh, feast, I would say, or in the during the year in other period of the year okay pan de muerto usually um is consumed by two or three months a year but this is a base for us to take care of all the bread um industry because it's really important to take care of this part of the life and uh, the bread is really really important to mexican culture uh, almost 90 percent of the mexicans uh, eat bread so for us, this is like a prime to, or like a prime to start a, a, a be a better industry in the bread industry. But yeah, we consume this this bread like three months, but we want to start to modify another um, bread types like a uh, rosca de reyes or or. Don donuts or something like that but yeah okay it's important yes thank you yeah yeah thank you are there any other questions
Okay, it doesn't seem like it. Well, thank you so much. Um, thank you. To Dev Spread and to all the teams. Uh, that was then all 10 presentations we've been through now, and I will hand over to Christoph. Yes, I'm here. Um, thank you also from my side for the very interesting presentations. I will just for a second share my, my screen again. So, yes, that should work. Full screen. Perfect. So again, thank you very much. Thank you for your presentations, but also thank you for the audience, for your questions and your interactions. And uh, we will now take a roughly 10 to 15 minutes break. Um, this is also to, um, I have to say sorry that we went over the time a bit. So we're roughly 10 minutes behind schedule. But I think this is also due to very interesting presentations. So we had a lot of questions, of course. Um, I think so that can be excused, let's say this way. So we will take about 10 to 15 minutes uh, break where we will collect uh, points of the advisory board. This is also to a reminder to the advisory board, uh, please send us your, uh, your points, send us your evaluations. And uh, once we are back, we will then announce the, the winning team. So please stay with us. Please stay tuned. And yes, we will see you in roughly 10 to 15 minutes again. Yes, so. Um, so before we announce the winning team, um, I and also on behalf of Christoph and Catherine and Putini, we'd like to thank, first of all, all the 10 teams for your participation in the competition, uh, for your great reports and presentations. They were of really, really high quality. Um, and also for having participated in such high numbers in the online trainings and for your active involvement and engagement and for asking many questions and giving feedback also to, to the other students. Um, and, and of course, most of all, for finding these innovative and uh, doable solutions to modernizing traditional foods. Um, but as we said earlier, it is a competition and competitions have winners. Um, and, then I, and I can say that the evaluation given by the advisory board on your project reports and presentations and together with the, um, the points you have received from participating in the online trainings and completing the learner ev evaluations, um, they were extremely close. Um, so you all did really, really well. Um, but we do have a winner, it is a competition. And the winner of the Food Factory for us 2022 is Team Nutrimento from Pakistan. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, uh, you, as I said, it was very, very close. Um, the points were very close in all the projects <gasps> and- um, <laughs> But uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Your project won the most uh, points and also your presentation, the way in which you gave your presentation and the way in which you answered questions. So congratulations. <laughs> Great. Thank um, you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Great. So, yes. Um, so before we end, we'd like to again thank you all of you for attending and for listening and for asking your questions and for being here today. Uh, thank you so much to the advisory board for, for being here and for reading the presentations and um, the reports and asking these great questions. And um, also thanks to Christoph and Putini for your support. And uh, not least, thanks to all the 10 teams from, from really around the world, uh, where it's very late now and still morning, um, for sharing your projects and these innovative ideas. We really hope you will keep up uh, this good work. And we also wish you all the best for your future entrepreneurial <laughs> um, journeys. 
and hope that you can continue uh, contributing to sustainable food value chains. Um, then we would also like to encourage you to check out our newsletter, which you can find on our website. Um, we usually write very a lot of uh, interesting articles about the research projects we're involved in. And we will also write, of course, about uh, today's uh, conference. And then as a very, very last um, um, thing I would like to ask all the teams and each team, actually, each student is to fill out the learner evaluation. You've done that very well throughout the last two and a half months. And now we just ask you to complete the very last one. And please do this by the end of Friday this week, by the end of the 16th of December. Uh, we need please everyone, each single student to fill it in. And only when we have all, we can then issue the certificates that you will also receive um, for participation. So on that note, um, we will of course be in contact with the, the, the winning team, Nutrimento, but also the rest of you. Um, and if you have any further questions, you're always welcome to, to contact us and um, yeah, I think that was it. Christoph, do you have anything else to add? No, I think you, you closed this perfectly. Okay, great. Thanks then again to all the teams. Thanks yeah. to, to all the participants who came here. Thanks to the advisory, advisory board, of course. And in, I think also in the name of Catherine, who couldn't be Absolutely. here Absolutely, yeah. yes. So, great, I guess. then take care, everyone, and hope to see you another time. Could we, sorry, could we maybe get a, a screenshot with the winning team and the slide if sure. they are still here so that we can post it on the social media? Yes. If the winning team, can if they're we still have here, exactly, and, and open your cameras again. Uh, yes, we are here. Could you please turn on your cameras? Yes, sure. Okay, give us a second. I think I'm missing one person. Um, no, you are not here. Your camera is not on, I guess. Now she's here. Okay. okay. I'm here. Okay, great. A while to find. So, cheese. <laughs> Perfect. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank and you. And congratulations so much. again. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you so much.